In this lecture, we will see the uh, combination of different spans which appears in case of polyatomic molecules when we see the experimental uh, vibrational spectra. Now, we have seen in the last lecture that the number of vibrational modes that are available to any polyatomic molecule is 3n minus 5 or let's say 3n minus 6 considering I have a nonlinear molecule. So that would mean that I would get 3n minus 6 number of peaks in the uh, IR spectra. But when you do it experimentally, now in this case we have made two assumptions. First, that my molecule is simple harmonic oscillator that would mean the selection rule is plus minus one so that means I would only get one absorption from one particular energy level uh, but the other approximation that is being done is that other vibrations are unaffected that means uh, let's say I'm considering the case of water when this is vibrating, what is the case that is happening with the vibration of this molecule, this bond? And at the same time, is there any contribution to the bending? We have not considered. We considered that all the vibrations are independent and it's the simple harmonic oscillator. But in uh, reality, in, in experimental spectra, when you see it's an it's not does not behave as a simple harmonic oscillator, but rather as an harmonic oscillator. And if we consider that this is not the case and we have an harmonic oscillator that would give me selection rules like this so that means that would have overtones apart from the fundamental i will get overtones now that would complicate the spectra a lot and we will not see that we have three and minus six peaks we may have less than that we may have more than that and at the same time the vibrations are also getting affected other vibrations are also getting affected because of one particular vibration which does not need to be seen in much detail right now so let's say uh, i have one two three and i may have mu one two mu one three mu one like this or mu two two mu two three mu two like this uh, let's say mu one is this and mu2 is this only for the vibration okay i may have overtones and first fundamental first overtone second overtone like this okay uh, so that okay now when when uh, we see the experimental spectra that we get we see that we have some new peaks and we are missing some peaks now that is because what happens most of the times or more, uh, sometimes is that let's say 2 mu1 has approximately same frequency as mu2 now when in a spectra when in when they have very similar uh, 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 values of uh, stretching frequency it's possible for them to interact with each other and the selection rules do allow them to interact and form combination or difference bands okay now combination band would mean i would get a peak at this position and difference band would mean i would get peak at this position now these are all according to the allowed selection rules for these type of interactions now it's possible now what is happening going to happen because of this now if you see mu2 is fundamental so that means it's a very it will have a very high intensity whereas this being overtone will not have very high intensity but when they are interacting the intensity gets also splitted now it will so happen let's say uh, you have a peak let's say at 1330 and a very small peak at 1334 uh, I don't remember but I think this is the case for CO2 if I'm not wrong now the fundamental has a very high uh, frequency whereas the first order has a very low frequency now but they are at a difference of only four centimeter inverse now it's possible for them to interact and what you will see is something like this okay now the intensity of the overtone has increased while the intensity of the fundamental has decreased this exchange of intensity occurs why because there is some resonance or some interaction between these two occurring and as a, and this phenomenon is known as Fermi 
resonance okay when the interaction between the two different peaks leads to some exchange of intensity okay now this is not always the case that this is going to happen but the case of co2 is a very uh, uh, you can say intensified case which is occurring uh, in most of the uh, in, in in this molecule but not necessarily this is going to happen every time you can have other examples like uh, 2 mu 1 plus mu 2 plus mu 3 or 2 mu 1 plus mu 2 minus mu 3. This would mean if you have one peak for this, now okay, let's say I have this and this interacts with another small peak. Now, because of that, you might get a third uh, peak with a different intensity. Now, that is not something that you would be expecting if you are considering these two approximations, but in reality, you are getting these peaks. And in order to resolve them, in order to solve them, you will need to come to this expression. Now, most of the time, you get only these. Why? Because we know we can mostly see first and second overtones because third overton, first overton require a lot of energy. That's why it is possible uh, to have uh, these kind of uh, uh, combination of different spans. So if we can solve these, you can get what those what these peaks actually correspond to. And it's possible to do that. Okay. Uh, I think that's all the bit that is there to discuss about combination and uh, difference bands and Fermi resonance. Not a single question has come from this part of vibration spectroscopy, but yes, it can come. It's a very crucial part of experimental uh, vibrational spectrum. With this, we come to the end of our discussion about pure vibration spectrum. In the next lecture, I'll be starting with a discussion of combination spectra for vibrational spectroscopy, that is vibrational rotational spectra of diatomic molecules, and then we'll move on to the polyatomic molecules.